that because, you know, this whole Hunter Biden thing uh, that everyone is suddenly talking about has really taken on a life unto its own because it sort of gets to what I'm always talking about about this reality war. That if you pay attention to things online, if you, if you select some interesting people on YouTube or via podcast or whatever else to talk about, to listen to things about and communicate about, then you would know that there's been something going on with Hunter Biden's laptop for quite some time, the story that broke from the New York Post that Twitter censored, that the mainstream media basically ignored before the election. And suddenly it's reaching critical mass now that they believe Joe Biden has won. And suddenly there's a feeling of, oh, we can't ignore this anymore and it's bursting into mainstream. So I wanted to uh, point out a couple things here, just specifically about the story, because it is something that you should actually know about. And then we'll do a little bit of sort of the way the media is doing their, their usual cover-up job. So uh, The Blaze has obviously been reporting on this, and they said that Hunter Biden, the son of former Vice President Joe Biden, said that he was under investigation by the U.S. Attorney General's office in Delaware, Maryland. Okay, so that's Hunter Biden himself saying he is under investigation. Now, this is exactly what people were talking about for about a month before the election, but who was talking about it was only the right-wing maniacs, those Fox News people and those Newsmax people and those crazy conspiracy theorists and Nazis and the rest of it. It wasn't the respectable journalists of CNN and NPR and New York Times. No, 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 they didn't want to touch it. Uh, we're going to show you right now. So this is these are two Politico headlines, just to show you the stupidity of the way they manipulate you. Uh, the one on the left, the headline on the left is uh, from before the election, and the headline on the right is just from the last day or two. So on the left, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former intel officials say. Now, of course, they're always anonymous intel officials, like the anonymous sources on Capitol Hill or whenever Stelter or, or Acosta or one of these losers at CNN, they always have these anonymous sources and it's just made up people. It's literally their imaginary friends. So before the election, again, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo. Have we heard that before? Dozens of former Intel officials say, uh, now post-election, this is just from the last day or two, Justice Department's interest in Hunter Biden covered more than taxes. Oh, so suddenly, I guess it's not Russian disinfo. It's something that the Justice Department's actually looking into, and it has not only to do with his taxes, but perhaps something much more. Well, that's sort of interesting. Uh, I thought this one was worth showing you guys as well, because again, I'm just trying to paint a picture of what happens where we forget week to week how these media organizations manipulate us. So this is from uh, Terrence Samuel of NPR. Now, NPR is still somehow funded by the government. Your tax dollars go to fund NPR, which is absolutely insane. There is media all over the place. And for some reason, the government funds nonsensical leftist drivel. Well, here's what NPR said about the Hunter Biden story, which again, was in the New York Post, a respectable newspaper. It's a tabloid for sure. I grew up in, in New York City. Uh, most of my adult life was in New York City reading the New York Post. It is what it is, uh, but nobody was challenging the veracity of, claim, of the claims in the story. NPR said before the election, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories. And we don't want to waste the listeners and readers time on stories that are just pure distractions. And quite frankly, that's where we ended up. This was a politically driven event and we decided to treat it that way. So in essence, before the election, they decided, oh, this doesn't really fit the narrative because this is going to make Joe Biden look bad, right? Because his son is deeply corrupt and got that job in the Ukraine and everything else on top of whatever else is on the laptop and the drug use and all of that stuff. And this ain't going to look good for Biden, so we can't talk about it before the election. Uh, this is a quote from David Shalane of CNN. This is before the election. He said, obviously, we're not going with the New York Post story right now on Hunter Biden. And I, the reason I thought that quote was worth it, because it's just like, oh, we just dismiss it. What do you, oh, oh, obviously we dismiss it. It's just crazy right-wing lunacy. And then NBC News uh, pre-election, a fake persona laid the groundwork for a Hunter Biden conspiracy deluge. I could have picked a gajillion more stories or blue check people on Twitter to show you how they were dismissing it. And now it's sort of coming around and they're finally begrudgingly having to talk about it. 